Hello, everybody. This is Lowell Thomas telling you about the Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam, the father of all high dams. It was considered too large to build, but 40 years ago, it was built anyway. This was a big project. Men, many men, men of strength, were needed to translate carefully drawn blueprints into steel and concrete. Cowards need not apply. However, skilled laborers, always in demand even during a depression, would not come to the desert unless decent housing was available. For the next five years, Boulder City a town built for the workers on a nearby plateau to avoid the searing heat of the canyon, Boulder City, Nevada. That would be their hometown. Here they would rest after a hard day in the canyon. In order to build the dam, work crews diverted the river through the canyon walls around the dam site. The four diversion tunnels, they were 50 feet in diameter and nearly a mile long, were driven through the solid rock. This was done in less than a year. Special equipment was developed for the project, including a rig which could drill 30 blasting holes at one time, thereby speeding the work. After the rock was blasted out, electric shovels cleared the way for more drilling and blasting. Three and a half million pounds of dynamite were used to excavate the tunnels. And when the tunnels were finished, concrete-faced rock and earth coffer dams were erected both above and below the dam site. The upper coffer dam, over a hundred feet high, the largest of its kind ever built. Once the river was diverted, preparation for the footings could begin. Heavy equipment scraped the floor of the canyon, scraped it clean of all loose rock and muck, on June 6, 1933, the first concrete for the dam was poured. Screening plants to produce the sand and gravel for the project dotted the desert, and train loads of cement wound their way to the canyon rim. For two years, buckets of concrete were lowered to the site, enough concrete to build a highway from Los Angeles to New York. To prevent dangerous cracks in the dam, the concrete was poured in sections, then later the gaps between the blocks were filled with more cement to form a solid dam. To help cure the concrete, more than 550 miles of tubing circulated chilled water to absorb the heat given off as the cement set. This method of pouring and cooling concrete was used in the construction of subsequent high dams. Not only was the dam itself considered an engineering marvel, but so was the Hoover Dam's hydroelectric system. In front of the dam are four huge intake towers, each 75 feet in diameter, 395 feet tall, about the same height as a 28-story building. The water flows from the intake towers into large pipes, some of which are 30 feet in diameter. A rolling mill was set up near the dam site, to bend and weld the three-inch thick steel into pipe. The finished sections, some weighing 300,000 pounds, were placed on a special trailer and carried to the canyon rim, where cable cranes picked up each section and lowered it to the construction level. The water flows from the large pipes into 17 generators located in the horseshoe-shaped powerhouse at the base of the dam. March 1, 1936, Hoover Dam was completed. During construction, over 3,500 men worked night and day in the desert heat. In order to complete the dam, 
doing it almost two years ahead of schedule. In five years they had built Hoover Dam, and it is acknowledged to be one of the engineering wonders of the world. So long.